I'm Erin Wilson, and you are listening to Inside NC Labor, a podcast designed to inform and educate North Carolina citizens on the role that the Department of Labor plays in state government. Well, hello, everyone. I'm Jennifer Haywood, Communications Director for the Department, and I'm here today with my co-host, John Mallow. Hi, I'm John. I'm a public information officer here at the North Carolina Department of Labor. And we are so happy today to welcome Kevin Obar as our guest. Kevin is the Bureau Chief of our Consultative Services Bureau. Hi, happy to be here. All right, Kevin, we are really excited to hear about your background and to hear about the really great work that you all do over in Consultative Services. So just to kick off, why don't you tell us a little bit about your background? Kevin, who are you? (laughs) Well, um, you know, I started in in environmental chemistry when I was in school, and um, due to various life events and market forces, I did a little sidestep from studying chemicals in the environment to chemicals at work, which got me into the OSHA realm. And I worked at our local NC State University um, during the 90s, and then in 2000, I came here to the Department of Labor and have been here over 22 years, so it's crazy. Environmental chemistry, that's a little bit intimidating. <laughs> was your, how far did you go with your education? Well, um, I was focusing on some of the hazardous chemicals, uh, you know, lead in the groundwater, drinking water, um, spilled gasoline, contaminated soil, asbestos, um, that type of thing. It was the environmental um, hazardous waste issues were, was where I was working uh, before I started working at NC State. I hear chemistry and I just have flashbacks to my high school days and struggling <laughs> mightily with that. <laughs> yes, there can be some, uh, can get complicated. But, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm yeah. glad there are people out there who can do that. <laughs> For me, it was more like barely passing with a D. Oh, so. yes. Well, <laughs> Sounds familiar. <laughs> Uh, well, most people hear uh, OSHA, which mm-hmm. stands for the Occupational Safety and Health. Mm-hmm. Is it administration? So it can be administration or it can be the Occupational Safety and Health Act. So uh, there's the law and then there's the current uh, bureaucracy. Uh, <laughs> but either way, yeah. People think of the regulatory nature of it. They think of penalties, fines, that they're going to get in trouble uh, when OSHA is mentioned or anything that's related to OSHA. Uh, but that's not what consultative services focuses on. How is consultative services different than the compliance bureau? All right, so in consultative services, uh, we do not issue any fines or penalties. Uh, The employer gets to invite one of our consultants on site and we would do a walkthrough and we actually will look at whatever the employer invites us to look at. The employer remains in control of that interaction So if they only want us to look at part of the facility, that's the part we look at. And whereas in the compliance interaction, it's the compliance officer who's actually in charge of that interaction with the employer. And they will look at what the evidence tells them to look at or what the complaint items tells them to look at. Um, And so our case, it's much, um, the employer can feel more relaxed because they actually do have the control of the situation and and the relationship. I think one of the reasons Uh, that the employers could call and invite us out you know we can help them get into compliance with the rules but more importantly we're hoping to eliminate some hazards from the job site and uh, then help them prevent injuries and illnesses to their employees and then that can trickle down and have you know if they have fewer injuries and then fewer workers comp claims then their workers comp insurance rate will go down and then you're talking actual money, you know, actual savings, tangible savings in their bottom line. And so that's, you know, one of the broader goals or secondary goals. And it all starts with our on-site visits. We can do the programmatic reviews as well as doing the walkthrough and to look for physical hazards. Well, you really just kind of answered my next question is, is why should a business contact you all? But Mm -hmm. I'm sort of curious, I don't know this answer, but did you start in compliance? Well, I started in, as a trainer with education and training, um, but then I did work in compliance. And so I've worked in almost all of our North Carolina OSH bureaus. Of course, I'm in the best one now. Of has, course you are. Right, right. I have to support my team. I'm on the consultative team now. Of course, yeah. absolutely. But, I mean, 
I guess before I came to work for the department, I had no idea that, that OSHA actually had friendly faces like constitutive <laughs> services. And I think a lot of businesses have that idea in their minds that we're all about citations and penalties. But if you if you were to talk to one employer who just thought, I never want to have any sort of OSHA in my workplace, what's mm-hmm. the number one reason why they should call you? Well, there are people who are afraid of that uh, reputation. I mean, and I'm quite confident that bark is worse than the bite, right? The, I've worked in compliance. There's plenty of friendly compliance officers. There's plenty of friendly interactions in that realm. One of the reasons that I would uh, ask employers to invite us out is just to help them with something they're struggling with. Our funding is targeted towards smaller businesses. Maybe the employer is, doesn't have a full-time safety and health person on staff. Uh, so we're able to provide that service, a fresh set of eyes, and just help them with their written programs and of course like I've already said help them just look in their place of you know in their business for physical hazards that they might be used to and maybe just you know like so many times in life a fresh set of eyes is a great option and I think we've glazed over the best part of all of this (laughs) which is that it's free (laughs) yes it is free yes so we have funding from federal OSHA in addition to the North Carolina of state and um, yeah so the employers have no costs and uh, as stated no, we as you know citations or financial penalties no reasons to not pick up that phone that's right but there still is the requirement that they do fix things that you guys so uh, right if something so sounds too good to be true maybe it is but in our case the only obligation the employer has is to repair the serious hazards that we identify and you know that's really why they're calling us out in the first place is to help identify those hazards so they can get rid of them i can't imagine they would call you if they weren't ready and willing to do that right that's right people that are working with us are people that are trying to do a good job trying to provide a safe place for their employees to work and in return for that if the employer requests a full service consultation which means um, like a wall-to-wall walkthrough with a safety consultant and a health consultant then we would actually put in a deferral from the compliance targeting pool. And what that means is that their business would not be in the random lottery for a general schedule compliance inspection. You know, and just for what you said, the employer's trying to do it right, they're making the efforts to do it right. So compliance doesn't really want to spend their time they're no. really limited time on somebody who's trying to do it right in the first place. Right. I mean, we have extremely limited resources across all of our OSHA mm-hmm. bureaus, and so we're trying to make the best use of our yes. time here. All states, I would assume, have some sort of uh, partnership with either federal OSHA or uh, they follow their own kind of like the state plan states mm-hmm. that have to um, have a program that is as effective as mm-hmm. what federal OSHA uh, dictates. So how do other states, mm-hmm. if they do have consultative uh, service programs, how do those differ from what North Carolina does or vice versa, right. what's similar? Right. Similar? Every state and territory has a consultative program available to the employers in that area. So state plans like ourselves, North Carolina, is usually, the program is usually run by the State Department of Labor. So our neighbors, South Carolina and Tennessee, fall under that category. And then the other states that are run uh, federal OSHA jurisdiction, their consultative services program is typically run through a university. So Georgia Tech and University of Alabama are some of our other neighbors. That's where the employers can find the consultative program in those states. So there's 54 consultative programs, so all 50 states um, ter- and territories in D.C. We all have to do it a little bit differently, don't we? <laughs> yes, right, just a little different. But they, you can track them all down, and no matter what part of the country you happen to be listening to this in, there is a consultative services available. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Well, and we talked about earlier, the whole reason that businesses invite you in and your, and your goal is to help those employers find the hazards and correct them. Uh, what are some of the most common hazards and issues that you all see during your visits? Mm-hmm. Well, there are always some electrical issues and machine guarding issues. We work with construction industry as well as general industry. We also work with the public sector, small towns and cities. Um, and so different industries would have different 
hazards, but I mean electrical issues, chemical, hazardous chemical issues, and um, machine guarding would always be pretty common in all of those industries, whether it's a water treatment plant or a manufacturing site or a construction site, some hazards are quite prevalent. And, um, and then some can be more industry specific, but our consultants um, have the expertise to work with different industries and will be comfortable no matter which industry that people mm -hmm. are calling from. What, what's maybe your top industry that you get requests from? We do a lot of work with construction because that's such a dangerous industry it's, and it's always changing. The job site is changing every day. Uh, there's a lot of subcontracting that goes on in the industry nowadays and you know some of the uh, employers when you get to the smaller employers they don't have the infrastructure or the uh, that's where we're available to help and you know, so that they can um, bid on bigger jobs and provide safe uh, work for the whoever whichever general contractor they're currently working for and that will help them get more jobs in the future I believe it's just beneficial all the way around right and so we kind of touched on it earlier about uh, usually a business or, as you said, like a work site will uh, call you guys out because they are willing and they want to uh, provide the safe workplace for employees. Are there ever any sites or workplaces that you go out to that you identify hazards that they are kind of uh, reticent or uh, don't want to fix or that they just don't see as being important and how would you handle a situation if there ever is a situation yeah, that, where they're hesitant that, to? Yeah, that type of a situation where the employer just really doesn't want to do it anymore, that is super rare. I think what surprises me is, uh, so for an example, if we have a combustible dust hazard, there are many dusts in the world that are combustible and explosive. And it, it's expensive and difficult to control that dust, so you have to get fancy you know, exhaust ventilation, and then you have to have like explosive suppression systems, and there's a lot of engineering that goes into it, and it has some fairly expensive costs. And we run into that in different industries, and I'm always pleasantly surprised with the employers who, you know, they say, well, you know, that took us a lot of work, and it took us some money, but this, well, they're so happy with the results, and they will then invite us to, maybe they have another plant for somewhere else in, in the state. And that was one of my fond memories I had with an employer who had to spend quite a bit of money, maybe about thirty thousand dollars, on a to controlling the combustible dust. And then they said they wanted to go to their other plant down the street. And I said, "Well, do you have similar, you know, um, operations there? You think you might have similar hazards?" And they said, "Oh yeah, we think we do." And I said, "Do oh, you still want us to come?" They said, "Absolutely, <laughs> please. It was so helpful at the first place. We really want you to come to the second place." So that was that was great. I'm sure in the end that pays dividends when they're not, you know, yeah. Especially with uh, like when you when you hire new people, you lose money with training. The same with people that are out Absolutely. with injuries, you lose money, uh, productivity. Mm -hmm. You have less people doing the same job. So in the end, it kind of pays for itself. I would. I would yes, think. Uh, injuries to small employers are very expensive. And you really you've got to be thinking long term. Right. Well, and, and I imagine, I'm, I'm glad to hear, and it just confirms what we were thinking, of course, that when employers invite you in, they're ready and willing to fix these things. I, I feel like it's much more common to see it on the compliance side, where we go in and do a compliance inspection where employers are maybe not quite as willing to mm -hmm. fix the hazards that are found there. You, you sort of just told us one story, but I love to hear success stories. Mm -hmm. and do, you, do you have one where you had a really positive in outcome or that it was just a, a good story? Right. Well, we have, I have uh, half a dozen success stories sitting on my desk and um, each year we get some annual reports from some of our customers who participate in the recognition program we have and they have different measures of success. So maybe they're saying their injury and illness rate dropped, that's a success story. Or maybe they um, have had a complaint or some other um, action that triggered a compliance inspection and then they had no citations but they're, because they had already worked with us in the past. I think I've mentioned workers' comp rates could go down because they have fewer injury claims and some people consider that the success because it's real easy to document the finances of it. And when we do have these success stories, we pass them along to Federal OSHA and uh, they will often publish them 
you know, at the federal level. We have one right now that will be coming out, I believe, later this summer. It's a company in Harnett County, Boone Edom, mm -hmm. and they turned in a success story. We passed it along to Federal OSHA, and um, I've seen the draft back and forth, and I think that story is now up in D.C., prepared in the queue for the Federal OSHA to publish it on one of its uh, websites or newsletters or, you know. And so that's happened quite a bit. Every couple of years, they'll uh, North Carolina is able to submit a success story. They do try to do other states, but we've always um, had ours accepted when we can, you know, publish. And we've had um, companies in the east part of the state and companies in the west part of the state. And now this time, we've got one right here in central part of the state in Harnett County. Well, I like to think that's because North Carolina just naturally has more success stories than any <laughs> other state out there. We have a lot of great employers and a lot of interesting you know, manufacturing going on here. And I'm glad you brought up the one, um, the success story about Boone Adam, because mm -hmm. I remember you sending that, mm -hmm. that our way. And then I think that might have been the first visit you went with us on down in Harnett. I'm talking to John here. He's been with us since um, January and we all went down to Harnett County to their sharp renewal ceremony and they had such a clean nice facility mm -hmm. yep yep the commissioner went there and yeah got some nice pictures mm -hmm. and kind of touching on what we mentioned previous with constituted services you're you're targeting more of the smaller businesses a multinational corporation like that who has the ability to hire their own uh, I guess like a EHS, uh, environmental health and mm -hmm. safety manager, mm -hmm. would not be one of the people you're targeting. Uh, so we can work with large companies, but the you know our priority would be for the smaller companies who don't have the resources, we, right? Who don't have the resources, but we are happy to help anybody in North Carolina that we can help. How has the COVID nineteen pandemic affected the program? and have the business request returned to normal? And what w what was the drop, if there was one, in requests for mm -hmm. consultative visits? Yes, well, talking with my peers throughout the country, I think most consultative programs experienced a big drop in requests. Now, one of the great things that consultative programs nationwide did was put together a, a virtual visit policy. So we were able to use the modern technology and still have video chats with employers and so we've got to keep providing our services even when we couldn't go on site physically and so that will allow us still to talk to the employers about their written programs every once in a while we'll have someone you know maybe use the camera to show us a particular machine or some other hazard they're concerned about and we may look so that that has helped us a lot so in North Carolina we've were able to maintain a fairly good percentage of our visits during the pandemic and now we're um, back out on site we still offer the virtual visits um, it's not as great as an in-person visit but it, it's a great tool that we have and has been able to help us when we needed it so I was happy that we had that option I continue to be amazed at how creative everyone became in a really short period of time you know, when, when COVID totally changed the way that we could do any sort of our business. And I remember hearing and reading about the virtual option for the constitutive visits pretty early on and thinking, wow, we can, we can do a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, North Carolina was a leader. Our, our consultants just jumped right on it, and it's been a success. And as far as uh, having our requests come back to normal, we're trying to push them back up. So I just sent out a big marketing letter to small manufacturers. Uh, we're getting back out to try to talk to um, conventions and, you know, do some in-person marketing. Um, and so we're, we're trying to drive them up. And we'll get back there. Yes. Well, earlier we kind of touched on the recognition program that you all have in Constitutive Services, and it is, um, it is called the SHARP Award. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about the SHARP program and, and how a business can apply for that. For companies that really want to go a little above and beyond, they would first have a full service visit with our consultants, and they have to have a strong safety and health program in place. And their injury and illness rate has to be below their industry average. So it is compared to their own industry. And it's a if, fair assessment. Right, it's a fair assessment, right. So construction sites are compared to construction, and bakeries are compared to bakeries. 
So, You're making me hungry. <laughs> yes, yeah. We, uh, if all those criteria are met, the employer can request to be in SHARP, and then we provide them some public recognition. We may have an event, uh, you know, the on-site, we have a banner, we get the plaque, certificate, and it's really whatever, however much um, press the employer would like. But we do try to reward them for that effort. They're able to use that and their own marketing to for whoever they're trying to impress with their safe and healthy work environment. And the benefits of being in SHARP um, include that deferral from the compliance general schedule inspection in addition to having a safe work environment. And so like we mentioned earlier, if someone's working with us temporarily, that deferral would just be while their case is open with us. So when our case is closed, that deferral goes away. But a SHARP participant, it can go two or three years at a time in their SHARP period. Right? And, and, their, and they will have to renew after two or three years uh, they write an annual report, uh, a self-assessment, when the year we aren't there in person. They would write a uh, annual report, self-assessment, turn it in, the consultants look at it, make sure everything still looks good. And we have a very large number of SHARPs, over 100 employers participate in that program. And again, from all industries and all parts of the state. And you say over 100 uh, establishments that are SHARP, SHARP certified. And that is a lot, but if you think about it in context of the number of establishments in North Carolina, I don't know the exact number, but I know that we're well over 200,000 business establishments in North yes. Carolina. That's still a pretty elite number. It's a very but elite number, we yes. We only have a little a little over 100 establishments that have qualified for this. So I think that's a, that's a great achievement. Mm -hmm. um, and just to you know reinforce what you said, you, know, you, can, you can apply for SHARP from anywhere in the private sector, and we also have a number of public sector yes. SHARP sites. Yes, we do. Cities and towns, fire departments. Yes, uh, we like to work with our high hazard uh, mm -hmm. departments in the public sector, so fire and police and parks and recreation and water treatment and, uh, you know, so those the higher hazard in, um, departments we try to reach out to. And for a business out there listening, how should they contact you? Well, we have a online form that can be submitted. We also are happy to email people a form and they can fill it out and email it back. We have paper forms that they can write on and fax it to us or regular mail it to us. Whichever way is most convenient for the employer, we're happy to take the request. And our request is a very simple one-page form. It's just your contact information at the top half and the bottom half is what are you requesting, what type of visit and we do have the safety consultants that focus more traditional safety hazards like electrical and mechanical and we have health consultants that will focus on um, health hazards like noise and blood borne pathogens and chemicals and so the employer can request one or the other or both. Uh, as we wrap up, uh, what is in store for the future of consultative services? Um, as you mentioned earlier, you guys kind of uh, roll with the punches of COVID and adapt it by using technology and I'm sure in the future new new ways of, of reaching out to employers and businesses and virtual mm -hmm. visits to the work site, things of that nature. Technology will improve um, in that way. Uh, so again, what, what do you see in the future of consultative services and as well, do you have any closing statements or thoughts you would like to add? Just some well, final words? Yes. Well, I mean, I would have never predicted the virtual visits, and those were quite a success. So I don't know what to predict next, but we are out there working every day, uh, and we have we'll occasionally even do visits. You know, on the weekends, we have meetings with people at night. We have consultants all across the state. Uh, now, there's not a huge number of consultants. We have 19 positions including uh, that's 11 safety and 8 health so it's not a huge number of people but we do work all the way from the Outer Banks to uh, Murphy right the Manny Oda Murphy is the old saying <laughs> and uh, we have a sharp company in Murphy North Carolina and we have one in Kitty Hawk so in the Outer Banks so we cover the whole state I would like to encourage any employer no matter where they are to submit the request and we'll provide whatever help with that we can. And in closing, I mean, this is a great 
job. It's a great group of people to work with. Our consultants are very experienced, very knowledgeable, and they're really very motivated to go out there and help the employers and all the industries all across the state. And it's just a great privilege to be working with them. Well, I'm going to close with just a, a moment of personal privilege. I know um, Kevin is a safety and health expert and apparently an environmental chemistry expert, <laughs> <laughs> but he, he's also a musician. Oh. And uh, would you share just a, just a little bit about uh, piano or, or whatever your... Well, yes, it is the piano I play as a hobby. It keeps me out of trouble. Um, I've been able to do that in a lot of fun places. And, um, you know, I, my office is right across from the Capitol, and they have the tree lighting, Christmas tree lighting every year at the Capitol. And so I think they saw me through the window, and I actually got to have been able to play the piano for the state Christmas tree lighting a few times. And, uh, you know, so that's just one example. But it, it's great fun. It's a good hobby. And, um, yeah, I enjoy it. And that just goes to show we do have lives outside of work. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> well, Kevin, thank you so much for being our guest today and telling us a little bit more about your program. Um, I, I think we're, we're proud of all the work we do at the Department of Labor, but we do really, really want the public to understand that we are here to help businesses. And that is the ultimate mission and goal of consultative services. So I think I would just highly encourage any business who is concerned at all about um, the safety and well-being of, of their employees to just call Kevin, um, visit us on our website, um, see what we have to offer. Yes. How about my, our phone number in consultation is 919-707-7846. Thanks, Kevin. We Thank really you, appreciated it. Thank you. It's been Have a, a great day. Thanks so much for tuning in, y'all. And remember, your safety is our priority.